session, we will touch base also on some uh, trace element concentrations and magnetic properties. But my name is Dr. Anna Peltseva. I come from University of Louisiana at Lafayette, and my expertise in uh, urban soil contamination. So this research is a interesting a new direction uh, for me as a researcher, done in collaboration with my colleagues at the department who actually specialize in magnetism. The goals of this preliminary study were to determine the baseline of magnetic cations such as iron, manganese, nickel, cobalt, and heavy metals. Um, lead, arsenic, cadmium, copper, chromium, and zinc in Louisiana natural soils. We also would like to uh, categorize the magnetic properties of Louisiana soils as a proxy for pedogenetic processes and search for correlations between magnetic cations, heavy metals, and magnetic properties. In the next set of slides, I will show you some uh, parameters that we've measured and tell you what the significance are. Uh, this uh, significance is um, this is ongoing research and we will have more results um, coming up. Here's a distribution of uh, our samples. There were 72 samples in total coming from 13 different sites, uh, locations also known as soil series, most common types uh, in Louisiana. The parent materials of these uh, soils are marine sediments, fluvial marine sediments, alluvium, and loess. Age varies between Holocene and Pleistocene. The main soil orders are antisols, alphasols, ultisols, and inceptisols. Antisols are recently deposited uh, sediments. Alphasols, highly leaching uh, clays uh, formed in humid and some humid, um, humid environments, uh, have a very high fertility. Ultisols, uh, highly weathered soils, also found in the humid environments, but they're quite old and have a low fertility. Inceptisols and newly developed soils, um, they're more advanced than antisols, but they don't really have good horizonation yet. So we have a really um, a good mix of different types of soils. And most of the soils are actually very, very fine textures, predominantly clay, silty clay loam, and silt loam, as is seen on this textual triangle. So the range of magnetic susceptibility that was one of our main uh, parameters studied uh, was uh, um, give us really interesting results. We could see that 72 samples uh, spread into bimodal distribution. And the first group is uh, low uh, magnetic susceptibility. It's characterized by oxidized magnetic assemblage, predominantly with hematite and goethite minerals while um, high magnetic susceptibility showed reduced magnetic assemblage with some magnetite presence. Measuring magnetic susceptibility in general help us delineate mag uh, soil magnetic groups, but also to find some outliers, just like we see on this uh, plot. This particular sample uh, showed very different uh, data uh, unrelated to bedrock anomalies. Possibly it may be it's a placer deposit or human impact. It's a shooting range or maybe some hunting activities that take place on that particular site. Uh, to um, mention also magnetic susceptibility would be very different between magnetite and hematite. For magnetite, it ranges between one to three. Um, SI and hematite magneti magnetic susceptibility is 10 to the negative third degree. The natural remnant magnetization also gave us um, uh, information that uh, there are some outliers in this data. So they may not necessarily be pure nature soils as uh, assumed by uh, preliminary observation of the uh, site locations. Yeah, so in this case, we see there are two samples that have uh, high values. We um, did some correlations between high field magnetic susceptibility in this uh, Louisiana soils. Uh, this is sem subset of samples, only 27. We will finish uh, analysis for 72, sam all for 72 samples. It takes a while, but even with this uh, subset, we see a very strong correlation between total iron concentration and high field magnetic soils. Um, there is no correlation uh, with the uh, low field magnetic susceptibility, which is commonly assumed to be associated with uh, natural soils. 
and there were weak correlations with other um, uh, sidereophile elements. So iron showed the strongest correlation of all. We also did this analysis called the first order reversal curve. And uh, this uh, fork analysis is used as a proxy for granulometry of magnetic particles and presence of bacterial activity. So uh, this is just one example of uh, 72 samples, but it's quite representative for most of the samples. It's um, the um, its axis here, the horizontal axis shows that uh, there's a multi-domain grains uh, and it's not just a single grain distribution. Um, the pragmatic fringe also suggests there is a, a activity associated with uh, big bacteria. So we hypothesize that there is a relict of protolis that is 20 to 30 percent detrital magnetite formed by bacteria feeding on that magnetite. And you can also see an image of uh, magnetosomes from bacteria that forms pure magnetite without titanium or nickel. We also use the XRF analysis uh, mentioned in the previous presentation, but we use a portable XRF. You can see in this image, this is typical soil profiles would, that would uh, dig in the um, uh, in the environment. Our particular uh, soils, in this case, we were collected uh, from the field and then analyzed in the lab to uh, um, produce more accurate results with portable X-ray fluorescence. So we collected them and then dried them, sieved them through two millimeter sieve and analyzed in the individual XRF cups. Uh, on this slide, you can see a representation of a five out of 13 a series uh, with a um, profile distribution of uh, measured elements. And um, we can see there's uh, differences in uh, behavior of uh, individual minerals with the depth, and also they have uh, some variability among their concentrations. For example, lead showed the highest variability. Low variability were observed for most of the um, elements, arsenic, cadmium, copper, and chromium. L cop copper um, had a middle uh, variability. Histograms of the same elements showed us there's more or less a normal distribution of them and the concentration in general uh, uh, far, like the same as we found in natural environments, except some um, samples uh, that had a higher concentration of cadmium or lead, higher than we would expect to see in a, a natural environment. For example, for lead, it's typically about 20 milligram per kilogram, and we had up to 60 in the sub um, couple samples in the topsoil, which might suggest there was some actually influence of um, some sort of contamination. Uh, the image is to show the sample locations of one of this um, series that it was coming from. Um, quite natural environment. When we compare this, uh, when we try to correlate the same elements with a high field magnetic susceptibility that was previously correlated to iron, we see there is not much of correlation except perhaps some relationship with the chromium. Uh, cadmium is not represented here because uh, cadmium concentrations for a lot of samples were below detection limit of um, XRF, which is one of the limitations of using X, uh, portable XRF uh, for cadmium. Uh, so this uh, lack of correlation between um, high field magnetic susceptibility and trace element concentration suggests there is a non-anthropogenic nature. For most of the samples, the, we can say they come from a natural environment. So the limitations uh, of uh, this study, it's that portable XRF does not analyze all the elements we would like to see. It does not, for example, analyze aluminum and uh, uh, silicon that was presented in a previous uh, research. They were able to do it. I guess they have other XRF um, equipment. Uh, and also there's some um, uh, limitations with the low detection limits, like for cadmium. We only analyzed 13 uh, main soil types. Uh, they mostly come from uh, like sedimentary parent materials. Uh, we would like to see what is going to be in uh, hydromorphic soils, like wetland soils or histosols, organically rich soils. And uh, we still need to finish results to gather data for uh, all 72 samples in regards of magnetic susceptibility. 
The advantage of this uh, type of um, uh, work with uh, analyzing magnetic properties and uh, looking at the trace element concentration is that magnetic properties can provide information on the origin of some minerals, grain size distribution, sortedness, distribution of iron along the soil profile. And uh, we observe those some iron oxides in the topsoil and the supermagnetic or paramagnetic para uh, properties that were increasing with the depth. Uh, we also can get additional information on mineral controls of chemical and pedogenic processes. And lack of correlation between high field um, magnetic susceptibility and concentration of trace elements uh, support the idea that most of the samples that came from the natural environment with minimum anthropogenic effect, except those couple outliers. So our continued work will focus on finding the trends uh, in the other soils of um, Louisiana to correlate uh, uh, magnetic properties to the soil types, depths, or horizon depths, look for the association with the drainage and mineral forms, and look into patterns that can be observed in the human impact soils. So establishing this background metal concentration, magnetic processes in the natural soils will help us to take this uh, information to the next level and actually evaluate uh, anthropogenic load in the future and also look at the special variability of metal concentrations um, in regards to magnetism and uh, variations in soil type. This is the very first study that uh, encompasses uh, so many different magnetic properties, but also measures heavy metals in natural soils in the different uh, locations of Louisiana, uh, which uh, become, uh, we basically establishing the reference for further uh, research. The implications of the study is that we can better understand the mineral origin uh, of the samples. For example, we found this um, bacteriogenic activity. Uh, we can also establish uh, sedimentary properties uh, if it's uh, multi-domain grains or uh, predominantly a single domain grain. And we can determine anomalies for further chemical investigations. So an improved understanding of background concentrations of um, metals, their concentrations, variations across soil types could help regulators make informed decisions on whether trace metal detections um, on the property reflect site-related uh, contamination and help scientists calculate anthropogenic loads of urban developments over time. And uh, this uh, work is done in my newly established laboratory, Delta Urban Soils Lab at the School of Geosciences. If any of you are interested in the soil uh, testing or collaboration or any soil research, please um, reach out. We focus on uh, um, not only on testing, but also on science communication, sustainability, community engagement, and environmental stewardship. So we have uh, applications for our research into the communities. Uh, I would like to thank you for your attention as well as thank my PhD student who helped run lots of this analysis 